Hello, OK friends. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching my video, my channel is all about orchids. From what orchids I have, how I grow them, my thoughts on certain orchid topics, to what orchids in my collection are blooming, etc. So if you want to follow along my orchid hobby adventure, please consider subscribing to my channel and turn on the notification. Today in this video, we're going to look at my Phalaenopsis yellow pixie. For this orchid cross, I have a total of six in my collection. It was on three separate, separate different occasions that I ran into these um, orchids. The first two, I bought them when I was living in New York, and then the second batch and the third batch, I came across yellow pixies once again at my local grocery store's Trader Joe's. They were all $8.99, I believe. And at that time, of course, I was very fascinated with orchids with fragrance. So I immediately, immediately put them in my um, shopping cart <laughs> as soon as I knew that they were fragrant. So toward the end of 2019 was when this orchid started to have signs of a growing new spike or elongating its existing spikes. So this orchid is a sequential bloomer. And based on my previous years of experience with this orchid, cross this type, um, usually the existing spike will bloom one more time and then it will die back. So Another thing interesting about this yellow pixie is that every time it reblooms, every time it, you know, put out flower buds, it's always, almost always, I can't say always, but almost always um, multiply of two, meaning it's either two or four or six. And out of all these six orchid or these six plants, and it's multiple blooming cycle. I've only had um, two separate occasions where one of them had a three uh, buds and the five buds situation. And you'll see another photo later in the video. You know, that this time around, I have a spike that was giving out five buds. But other than that, it's always two or fours. Could be coincidence, but you know, I just wanted to point that out to to share with you. So this orchid is fragrant, like I said, and it's really, really fragrant. It's not just about, um, you, you don't have to put your nose close to the orchid and you can smell it. And especially when I have six and when they're all in bloom, gosh, it's really, really strong. I could smell them from a couple of feet away. <laughs> so it's quite nice. This orchid, these two orchids, the last batch, the last two I purchased are still in its original cup and original media and that is a cross or a mixture of bark chips and sphagnum moss. And this orchid, they're still doing pretty well in its original container and media. For some reason, um, I didn't think, well, not for some reason, let me tell you why I did not repot them after they finished their initial uh, flowers since the purchase. Because the media, they still looked pretty okay. The bark chips and sphagnum moss still look, you know, they, they are not broken down in any way. I mean, yes, slowly over time they will, but even until this year, until now, I still feel that they can go for another year without the need for a repot. So I think this year I'm gonna keep them, continue, you know, keep them in the original container and media because unless I have to, I really don't want to disturb them because I ideally would like these two orchids to grow more leaves and roots so that way it is a fairly established mid-sized plant for me to, you know, take it out, clean the roots, and then eventually put them into inorganic media. I really like the way that this these two orchids are planted in bark chips and sphagnum moss, but because I really do not want to having to repot the orchid just to change out media every two, three years if I don't have to. So I think I'm still gonna continue to try to move 
most of my orchids to inorganic media. So when I say that, usually it's really a mixture of manto clay and hydrocorn. Manto clay is a smaller pebble um, that people use for bonsais, but because it's also made of clay material, it's also water retentive. And then hydrocorn is just another type of leka beads, except it's not in perfect round bowl shape like leka beads. Hydrocorn has this irregular shape to it, and then on the surface, it's also slightly, it has slightly more cracks. Um, on the surface, and I believe that will increase the water retention, um, the amount of water that the surface of the bowls can ret uh, retain. Anyway, that's just what I have, so I usually mix both of them together, and the ratio usually I start with one, one to one, and then if it's thicker roots, I would probably increase the bigger size um, pebbles, and then if it's the thinner roots, I would definitely increase the size of manto clay, smaller pebbles. Um, and so far, a lot of my orchids are doing really well in inorganic media, a mixture of these two materials, manto clay and hydrocorn. But I noticed that the best case scenario really is I use these two type of med mixture, me uh, medium mixture in a smaller container. Because it, with the semi-hydro, the idea is that you want to, um, like for manto clay and, and hydrocorn, um, I usually grow orchids in these type of media in a hydrocorn, uh, hydroponic setup. Um, and sometimes I notice that, you know, if I give them too, slightly too big of a container, their growth, speed usually is slightly slower for the first six months or even up to a year and then they will pick up um, so this year I started to transplanting some of my orchids that needed repot because of their old medium their old organic media uh, substrate uh, so I put them in this inorganic media but in a smaller container for some reason um, they just immediately adopt to this media and grow really crazy roots which i'll show you guys later in a separate video in the future so i guess what i'm trying to say is these two orchids what if i repot them next year i would use manto clay and hydrocorn um yes i do have some other orchids that are grown in moss um, no hole method you know no drainage hole with moss in between, you know, as media. That method is really fun, and I think it's another great way to revive orchid, other than like full water culture. Um, but I don't really do full water culture anymore. I do water culture. Um, I have about six orchids in water culture, but primarily I probably, I think I probably, you know, utilize semi-water culture rules with those or bare root orchids than than full water culture because i really think orchid roots do need a bit of dry period um, between watering because otherwise gosh i just can't believe that they are soaked in water for all that time and and not rot at all <laughs> anyway the overall care for this orchid is that every time I water it, I would provide about quarter cup of water for summertime, and then in winter time, when when it's not as hot, I usually reduce the water amount to about one eighth of a cup. In terms of fertilizer, it's usually quarter strength, so just about twenty five percent recommended dosage. And that seems to be enough to rebloom these orchids and their leaves are looking pretty healthy. They grow new leaves, new roots, and they rebloom. And the orchid's flower size are, you know, the same as previous years. So I think this orchid is still doing pretty well with the kind of current care that I provided. Overall, I think these are a really great find, and if you want to, you know, try your luck, you might want to, you know, visit your local Trader Joe's in springtime. I know right now, it's, but by the time you see this video, it's not spring, but just keep in mind, they do have it 
in the fall as well because I got my last two I believe in the fall so check it out if you want to give it a shot this is all I have for you today if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you would like to get more orchid related videos from my channel please subscribe and turn on the notification I want to wish you happy growing and I will talk to you in my next video ciao